Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to church today, and welcome to all, this, all those people watching online. Um, it's great to be here once again, and it is great to be, um, to be able to see each other. I think to be able to see each other face-to-face is now a privilege. Just a kind reminder that we all have to, do, we all have to continue to do our part to keep um, the physical gathering safe for everyone. So that includes keeping the 1.5 meters social distancing, uh, man- maintain good hand hygiene, and leave our contact details at the door. Um, we also do temperature checks, and we have face masks available for everyone. There is, however, a small change to the COVID safe way of worship from this week. Um, so apart from the song leader, apart from Edison, um, we are no longer allowed to sing during worship. Um, as it is considered a high-risk activity that can spread the virus. Um, For those watching online, just a reminder, we will also be observing the Holy Communion um, here in our service this morning. Uh, We would like all the baptized brothers and sisters to also join us, so please prepare um, your own bread and wine at home. Now let us get to our feet as as we praise our Lord. Although we cannot sing during this time, the Lord also commands us to meditate on His words. It says in Psalm 104, verse 34, May my meditation be pleasing to Him as I rejoice in the Lord. all stand as we prepare our hearts to worship. In Psalm 56 verse 3 it says, when I'm afraid I put my trust in you. Do you find peace in Jesus? In his presence? May the Holy Spirit now work among us as we uh, start our praise and worship. Who is like you Lord? Who is like you Lord?
nothing in this world will satisfy Cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't my dry Nothing in this world will satisfy Cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't my dry Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, your presence is heaven to me. Psalm 46 verse 10 it says be still and know that I am God in John 14 verse 13 Jesus said and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father be still be still
a very short song, um, very simple lyric, but I think it's a, it's a prayer that we can always put in our heart. So while we cannot sing in presence, you can do, the, do so at home, um, but we can still um, try and listen to the melody and the words. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in uncertain times like this, we continue to uh, look upon you for guidance. We continue to pray for a vaccine that can be developed quickly to ease the pressure of this world pandemic. We pray for those who are going through economic hardship, weaknesses in health, or simply loneliness during this lockdown. We pray that you can help guide them through the tough times. 
We thank you for Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. We continue to pray for James, Rachel, Malachi, and Sophia who proclaimed their faith in public a few weeks ago. We pray they can live a life that is holy and blameless and that their lives can be a good testimony to others around them. Furthermore, we pray that you can give them the courage to share the good news of Jesus to those around them too. Father, we continue to remember those who are sick in our church. We bring uh, Brother Frank Lanier, Brother Wan Rerong, Brother Huang Yinan, Sister Wei Li Hui, and Brother Xue Wenzhen to you, Lord. May you guide them and strengthen their faith during these times. Furthermore, we pray for the health and well-being of expectant mums, Jamie, Candy, Denny, and Celia, and the growth and development of their babies. We pray you can continue to look after them and let what you have blessed them so abundantly can also bring blessing to others around them. Lastly, we pray for Kian's message today. Um, please strengthen him as he strengthens others. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's Bible reading is from Psalm 121, and I will pass the time to Sophia, who will read the Bible for us today. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help come from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor slip, sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor by the moon by light, night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He watches over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Thank you, Sophia. I'll pass the time to Pastor Kian, and today's message is finding peace in an, un, in an uncertain time. It's really good to see you all. Uh, I hope that you are well. Is this okay? Yeah? All good? Okay. Um, it's really hard when you come to church that you can't sing. Um, I heard that uh, there is an article actually uh, from Japan who said that they open up the theme park, people can ride on a roller coaster, but they can't yell. <laughs> It's really hard, right? Because, you know, roller coaster and yelling and, you know, shouting, they all go together, aren't they? And it's like, you know, Christians in a church, you know, Christian going to church, singing and Christians, they go together. It's really hard. Um, a couple of weeks ago in our uh, student meeting uh, at university, at Macquarie University, as you know that I'm working at Macquarie University amongst international students, there is a song leader who came, and she actually taught us how to sing with, uh, with sign language. Because some of the people, you know, they can't really sing like um, most of us. Uh, and then, you know, singing with sign language. And probably that's a good practice for FCOS next week, you know, <laughs> trying to do singing in sign language. Uh, it's really great to be here again, and uh, it's really great to be delivering God's Word, and also later time that we will take the communion together. Um, it's really a hard time for all of us, but I believe that the Word of God continues to speak to us, and our God is always active. He's always active. Even though human beings are limited, at the moment, but our God is always active, and I'll tell a little bit the story actually uh, in my sermon later. Uh, let's pray together before I explain to you from Psalm 121. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we give thanks to you because you are the one who is worthy to be praised, and you are the one who is actively speaking to us through your word. And we pray, God, that as we meditate from Psalm 121, that you will be with us. Please speak to us so that we can understand more about you and understand more about us. 
and how we need you so desperately. We thank you that you have sent Jesus Christ into this world to die on the cross for us. And we pray, God, that you'll be with us as we meditate on your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it's really hard. How do you navigate your life in an uncertain time? It's really hard. The question was that, what sort of values at the end of the day that you will put? Um, this is not an easy time, uh, not only for Australians, but also for everyone in this world. And personally, actually, uh, there is a research that has been done in Australia that says that there are more than 30% of the additional mental health problems because of COVID. We're not talking about people who have had COVID or maybe who are having COVID, but this is actually all the different issues that might arise because of COVID. Um, the, uh, uh, the Age newspaper, uh, next slide, uh, actually have raised this uh, article that's saying that more than 30%, there will be some additional 30% of those who have mental issues, there will be uh, in those in Australia. In Victoria, they said that there will be around 370,000 more people who will be hospitalized because of COVID. It's not only you know, due to COVID, but this is actually because of this issue. And a lot of them actually have had these mental issues in their life. And in, that's not including those uh, about hundreds or so who will be probably committing suicide. And out of uh, those 370,000 people, 80,000 of them, according to this article, actually, good point, this is the, uh, uh, the graph, um, about 80,000 of them are those who are in the age of between 20, 12 to 24, which is really interesting. The young people, you know, even though they are probably more immune to COVID, but, you know, uh, mentally, there are a rise basically of these cases, especially from those who are within this age group. Uh, I have a friend who is a GP, uh, and another friend who is a psychologist said that actually the additional measure is more than 30%. Uh, it's about around 50%. And it is true, though. Uh, because, you know, you can't really go home, go out of home without these things at the moment, right? These things are just necessary in your bag. You have to have hand sanitizer. You have to have, you know, this disinfectant wipes and all those things. You have to make sure that your phone is, has a COVID-safe app <laughs> in Australia. And a lot of people actually are worried whenever they go out to store or maybe to shop or something like that. Uh, if you go into this church, you will be temperature check. And, you know, once you get home, you will change your clothes probably. Or probably, you know, if you have the disinfectant sprayer, you will be spraying all, all those things that have been in contact. Um, and it's, it's really stressful for most people. Um, in Indonesia, this is what happened with, with Grab, you know, with, with the, uh, uh, the Grab bike, basically. There is, uh, there is something that basically separates between the driver and the passenger. It's, it's really interesting, you know, I've never really thought that that, you know, something that can be done, but, you know, this is what happened. Um, a lot of people actually have experienced life drastically change because of COVID. And I believe that this change, this drastic change, makes a lot of people stressful. Makes a lot of people stressful. What, do we, what can we rely in this kind of situation, in this kind of crisis? What sort of things, these things change, right? I mean, we have to go out now, you know, probably bringing all those things in our pocket or maybe in our bag. But what is one thing that, that doesn't change? That's the question. What is one thing that doesn't change? Well, this psalm actually help us to see who God is, who we are, and why we need God so desperately in our life. So this psalmist, the guy who sings this song, actually has taught us a few things, at least four. 
Number one, actually he stopped. He stopped. Look at verse one. This psalm is known as the psalm of ascent. So if you look at your Bible, it's called a song of ascents. Um, and this song is actually a traditional song that was being sung by the people of Israelites as they go to Jerusalem. They go to Jerusalem usually once a year. They go to worship God in the Mount Zion. That's where Jerusalem is located. And every year, they take this traditional route. And this singer, this psalmist, he stopped. In the middle of the way, he stopped and he asked in his heart, where does my help come from? You see, it's very interesting. The question is, where does this singer is facing himself to? Where is he facing? Is he facing upward or is he going downward from Jerusalem? It's, it's not clear in verse 1. Because it says here, I look, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? And, you know, we don't know in which direction he's looking at, right? And usually people in Israel, they usually go up to Jerusalem. It means because they're going up to the hill. And then most of the people probably think that the psalmist is facing upward, looking to the hill. And, you know, probably in a way to go to Jerusalem. But in verse 8, look at verse 8. It's very interesting. In verse 8, what does he say? He says in verse 8 that the Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. So it means that we don't really know for sure if he is going upward or is he going downward. What we know is that he stopped in the middle of the way. And he look up. He look up to the hills and he asks, where does my help come from? It's very interesting, isn't it? Because the psalmists here have seen the mountain, basically, as a place of help. So for example, in chapter, um, if you have your Bible, in chapter 11 of Psalm, chapter 11, verse 1, actually, the psalmist has referred the mountain as a place of help, for example. Uh, and it is true. In the Bible, most of the people, they run away from their problem to the mountain because they know that in the mountain they can find help from God, right? And this mountain is becoming a place of rescue, a place of protection, in a sense. And what is interesting is that most of the people, they run away to the mountain whenever they have problem. But the mountain can also be a source of problem. You remember the story of Jesus about the Samaritan, the good Samaritan, right? This good Samaritan basically has helped this guy, and this guy was beaten up as they go from Jerusalem to Jericho, as they go down. So mountains can also be a place in which there is a crisis. But in any case, in any case, he stopped. He stopped and he asked himself, where does my help come from? It's very interesting. If there is an appropriate thing for us to do during this crisis time, it's actually for us to stop. That's why we come to the church on Sundays on the day of Sabbath, and Sabbath actually means you stop. You stop from everything that you do. You come to God, and you reflect it on God. And this is what you ought to do in the time of crisis, in this time of COVID pandemic, is that for human beings to come to God and to stop from everything that you do, to stop and come to God and ask God, God, where does my help come from? Who am I hoping for in this world? As you know that because of COVID, everyone actually experienced this. No matter how much money you have, no matter how old, maybe how young you are, you all face it. And this is what we ought to do. We need to come to God and stop. In 9-11 crisis in America, 
The next day is actually a day in which church attendance is just like jump a hop eye to the roof. And you see that this is all because people stop and people come to realize where does their help come from. You see, it's very interesting. We need to come to God and stop. If there is something that you can do, whether you are here in this church or maybe at home, it's actually for you to stop and to contemplate what God has done for you. And it is for you to stop and to see that God is good, that He is ever-present help for us. It's not to stop to watch Korean drama. It's not to stop to watch, you know, Taiwanese drama or, you know, any, anything that you want to you watch. But it is for you to stop and to reflect on God, to stop and to read His Word, to stop and to pray, to stop and to read good Christian books, for example. Stop everything that you do and look upon God. That's the first one. The second one that he does, he actually asks and he answered that, that question in verse 2. So this is actually not a question because of disbelief. All right? This is not a question because of disbelief. But this question is a question because he wants to know more about his faith. <laughs> he wants to know more about his faith. So, because I believe that our journey, our faith journey is not just flat, you know, but it is going up and down, and there are times in which we need to ask God, what does it really mean? So there are questions here, there is question here that was being asked by the psalmist. And sometimes we do have question too. And we ask God, where does my help come from? And you see here that he not only just asked, but he also answered all those things, all this question. And he said that my help actually comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. What he said is that all of us need help. <laughs> what he said is that all of us need help from God. And this is what we ought to do. I ask and I find out that answer. Which is really interesting, right? Before you reach 40, you never really known these things. But after you reach 40, you start knowing different pills. And usually different pills is known, is taken by different colors. Let me just tell you, that's how it goes to make it just easier to remember, okay? Which one taken at morning, which one taken at night and everything. Because, you know, I have some pills that I take as well. This is in the morning, this is at night. And, you know, it's very interesting, right? Well, until you reach 40, then you realize that I do need help. <laughs> I do need this medical help, this doctor's help. And if we are honest, you know, our greatest help our dire, dire thing help is actually can be found in God. We can find that help in God because we know that when we come to God, God is the only one who can help us. And He is the only one who can give us solution. And, you know, probably doctors can give you solution, but, but God is actually <laughs> the God who can give us all the solutions that we need. So the psalmist here is facing to the mountain, and he asks, where does my help come from? And he said that my help comes from whom? From the Lord, first of all, the maker of heaven and earth. He's not saying that my help comes from God. He said that my help comes from the Lord. This is actually an intimate name of God. And he knows that he has that relationship. And he realized that his help comes from the Lord, Jehovah. That's his name. And this is not just a God, but this is the God who makes the heaven and the earth. The God who is in charge in everything. This is the God, basically, who is an expert in everything. Okay? And he says that my help comes from Jehovah, who is the maker of heaven and earth. He is the God who can do exceedingly beyond what we can imagine. And that's what the Apostle Paul actually said in Ephesians chapter 3. 
when he said that it is to him who can do everything more than what we can imagine and thought, actually. <laughs> to him who is able to help us. You know, we need to stop. We need to ask, where does my help come from? But we need to find that answer. And that answer can be found as we read God's word, as we gather together and discuss God's word, that our help comes from God. This is the maker of heaven and earth. Okay? It doesn't really come by your career or from your career. It doesn't really come because, you know, you have athletic body. It doesn't come because, you know, you are able to do this and that. It doesn't come because you are able to achieve this mark or that mark or this GPA point or that GPA point. It doesn't come when you can get a permanent residence. <laughs> But your help comes when you know God personally in Jesus Christ. Well, there is nothing that is more, there is no time that is more fitting is for us to stop and to ask God and also to find that answer now during this crisis. So that's number two. Okay. Number three, which is really interesting, he's not only just asking God, he is not only finding the answer, but here he actually gives a testimony <laughs> during this time, which is really interesting, right? Well, a lot of people who study this psalm, Psalm 121, ask, who is this psalmist, this singer, is talking to? It's really interesting. What do you think? Who is he talking to? Well, he is on his way to go either to Jerusalem or from Jerusalem, okay? And whatever that context is that, he asked to the people who was probably on the traditional route as they go down from Jerusalem or maybe as they go up to Jerusalem, there are other people who go with him. And he asked them that question. And he found that answer. And once he found that answer, he testified about God. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, he said that he will not let your foot slip. He watches over you, will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. So this is, this is his testimony about God. This is the God that he knows. The God that he knows doesn't sleep. <laughs> the God that he knows doesn't really fall asleep. Okay? And he probably, this is, reminds us of the story in... First Kings, First Kings chapter 18. This is a story when Elijah is going against the prophets of Baal. And then Elijah said to these prophets, maybe Baal is sleeping. <laughs> maybe Baal is sleeping in, in 1 Kings chapter 18. Probably, you know, wake him up. You need to wake him up. <laughs> Probably he's sleeping. So that's why he doesn't really act. Well, what is interesting is that uh, the concept here from that time is that all these gods, in default, in default, they're all sleeping. They're all sleeping by default. Okay, by default, they're all sleeping. So in order for you to uh, have this God or that God act upon you, act on your behalf, or maybe act or do something, you need to wake him up. You need to give him food. Or something like that. You need to wake him up. Probably do this dance or that dance. Make sure that he is up. And that's, that's what the understanding is uh, from the people from the ancient Near East. But this psalmist said that the keeper of Israel, the one who guards Israel, never sleeps. He's always active. He never sleeps. You can call him anytime. <laughs> you can call him anytime. And a few times here in verse 3, in verse 4, verse 5, and verse 7, it's basically saying that the Lord Jehovah is the faithful keeper. He is the faithful guardian of the Israelites. And this is not false hope or maybe fake news or something like that. This psalm is trust from the history of Israelites. He knows. 
how the God of the Israelites is the God who is always active. He is the keeper of, he, of this nation. And he knows that his faith in God actually will be the one who will protect him. And this applies not only to the Israelites as a nation, but also to the individuals here, including the singer, the psalmist. Let me just tell you, if there is something that you could do during this time, it's actually for you to testify about God, that God is good, that God is awesome, that He keeps you intact. <laughs> That's really interesting, isn't it? Um, before I move on to, the, uh, to point number four, um, I do have a story of how actually uh, a member of our group at university, she is a student actually from Guangzhou. Uh, she is a PhD student. She is actually doing her research here for only less than a year. And she's being brought to our group. And she, she is not a Christian. Um, and we actually, you know, share the gospel to her. And after a few months, this is during lockdown, when there is no physical meeting, okay? She came to me, and she gave me a call, and she came to me and said that I want to be a Christian. I said, praise God. <laughs> I thought that, you know, during this lockdown, when we have online meetings, I thought that that's, nothing will happen, all right? Nothing is going to happen. But God is the God who is active. And I asked her, actually, how can, well, let, please tell me, how did you first get in touch with us? Because we didn't really advertise that big or something like that. But she said that one of her friends, actually, one of her friends who goes to this group has been coming to her and testify that God is good. It's very interesting, right? I mean, we thought that, you know, when things are just being all passive and locked down, we thought that nothing is going to happen. But, but our God is active, and He can use people, people that He trusts, people that He chosen to bring other people, those who walk in darkness, come to light. Praise God. Praise God. Number four, not only that, but this psalm is, is protected. It's really interesting keeps going on and on and on again saying that the God of Israel is the God basically who keeps him safe. He doesn't have to be afraid. He doesn't have to worry about his life. In verse 5, it says that the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. This God of Jehovah, this Jehovah God is the one who created the heaven and the earth. He is the one who becoming the, you know, private keeper or private protector of this psalmist, which is really interesting, okay? He is more than a secret service to the president of America, and he is the one who will take care of this psalmist. And it says it in verse 5, that the Lord is your shade at your right hand. What does it really mean by that? Well, I have, a, I have a picture here of a soldier in an ancient Near East time. Usually on the left hand, he holds this shield. But on the right hand, actually there is no protection. He only carries his sword or something like that. So he needs that protection on his right hand. So that's why the psalmist says that the Lord actually watches over you and he is your shade at your right hand. That's what it means. So God is the God who will give us protection. And that protection is not just a partial protection, but this is a full, complete protection of our life. And, you know, He is becoming our guardian. He is the one who guards us, who keeps us safe 24-7 during night, or maybe during the day. It's really interesting. In verse 6, the sun will not harm you by day, nor moon by night. It means that he is there 24-7. <laughs> he 
You don't have to be afraid. He is there 24-7. He's going to be the keeper of your life. He's going to be the one who watch over your life. It's very interesting when um, I have two sons. Uh, both of them are, are actually grown up now. But I still remember that when they were young, when they were babies, uh, we don't have anyone who help us. We only have baby monitors, basically, who help us, being able to watch over them because they sleep in a different room. But these days, baby monitors are very sophisticated. You know, they have video. We only had sound, basically, at that time, all right? But we keep that baby monitor, basically, in, the, uh, in our uh, son's room, and we can only hear sound, basically, if there is something on. But there are times, I believe that there were times in which we just slept. We didn't wake up. We were too tired. We slept even though there was a sound. Okay? I have to admit that. <laughs> Still remember there were times in which we just, we just didn't really care so much. But this is different. Our God is the one who keeps us safe 24-7. 24-7. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He is the one who keeps us safe in His hands. Body, mind, soul, and spirit. Everything. Every element of us. And He said that He, he will watch us from harm. And He will watch over us. Over our coming and going. Both now and forevermore. How can you have this God who can watch over you 24-7, <laughs> you know? You don't have to pay Him. You don't have to wake Him up. <laughs> you don't have to give Him, like, you know, food so that He can be alerted or something like that. No, 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 no. We can have this relationship with this God by trusting in His Son, Jesus. That Jesus has died on the cross 2,000 years ago for all of us. And we can have this full protection from God when we trust in Jesus, His Son. I would like to invite you to come to God and to trust in Jesus because by trusting Him, then you can have your life secured, that you can have your life protected. And as we come to this table, every month we come to this communion table, we are being reminded of what God has done for us in Jesus. And there is no, you know, strange time in which we can come to God for the very first time and trust in Him as we take this communion. And I would like you to be thinking about your relationship with God. Have you had Jesus in your life? And if you don't have Jesus, I would like to invite you to come to Him and trust in Him and join us as we take the bread and the wine together. Let me pray, and we'll move on to the communion table. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this amazing privilege that you've given to us to read your word, to meditate from your word, and to come before you, Lord, in your house, on your day, to worship you and to listen from you. And we pray, God, that as we do that today, that you be reminding us that you can be our protector, that you can be our shield, that you can be our guardian 24-7. We don't have to worry about our life because we know that our life is in your hands. And we pray, God, that we can have this privilege in Jesus Christ as we come to Him, as we are being reminded of His sacrifice on the cross. We pray, God, that we continue to reflect on our life and to see whether we have trusted in Him. And thank you for your word, and we pray that you continue to speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
friends, um, this is actually not just a tradition. This is actually what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. On the night when he was betrayed, he took the bread uh, in front of his disciples and he gave thanks. And he said that this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And also on the night, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. I would like uh, you to join. If you uh, are a believer of Jesus Christ and if you have been baptized in this church, I would like you to join and to participate and to give thanks to God for what God has done in Jesus. If you are at home, you can also prepare your bread and your grape juice or wine, and we can uh, take together as we, as we meditate on what God has done for us. So this package actually is uh, uh, all in one, which is really nice. You can just uh, open the, the seal, take the bread together, and we'll take the wafer together, and then we'll drink uh, the juice together. Please stand up. As you receive this, please keep this with you. And then we'll take this together. Uh, take the, uh, the wafer and also take the grape juice together. Keep on standing and uh, we'll just wait until everyone gets one. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for such an amazing opportunity that you've given to us to celebrate this. Thank you so much for the death of Jesus on our behalf 2,000 years ago so that we can be set free, that we can be forgiven, that we can live our lives pleasing to you, Lord, because of Jesus. And we give thanks to you for his sacrifice on the cross, that in his name we pray. Amen. Let's take this wafer together. Let's drink the juice together. Let's pray one more time. Again, thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross 2,000 years ago. And we pray, Lord, that we are able to live our lives pleasing to you, Lord, trusting in you because you are our protector and you are the one who keeps us safe and you are the one, Lord, who is the maker of heaven and earth, that in you we can find a refuge. We pray that in this time of crisis, in this time of need, we may be able to stop to us to find the answer, to testify, and to realize that you are the one who keeps us safe. And we thank you again for this time that we can come together, listening from you, and also receiving from you, from the bread and the juice that we take. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
Let us all stand as we sing a response song. Jesus' presence is heaven. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Which is love and beauty in this world? Nothing in this world will satisfy.
Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you that you are the God who is present in our lives and also in the lives of those who trust in you. Thank you that we can come to you, not only in this building, but we can come to you, Lord, as we trust in you, as we live our lives with you. Thank you that you have lived in us when we trust in Jesus. And we pray, God, that as we depart, that your presence may continue to live in and amongst us. And we do pray that as we um, live our lives, Lord, in this coming week, that you will be glorified. Thank you so much, Lord, for reminding us that you are the God that we can trust, that you are the God that we can rely upon 24-7. We don't have to be afraid. We need to trust in your son, Jesus. As we depart, we ask for your blessing. May the love of God, the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, and the Holy Spirit be with us all from this time onward and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Kian. Um, I'll just go through some of the notices from today. Um, point number four, just a reminder for all the deacons, we have a deacons meeting on the 8th of August, that's next Saturday. Um, and then point number five, we have theological class coming up um, on the 18th of, of August. And the next class is um, Preaching Methods 1, taught by the principal of Logos, Reverend Peter Chen. It will be via Zoom, um, but it's a very practical class. I've been through it myself, and you get to preach um, here on stage. Um, well, that was at that time. I'm not sure how we're going to do it via Zoom, but um, it's a very good experience, and I really encourage everyone, everyone to have a go at preaching and writing your own script. And if you're interested, you can contact a Sister Xiaoyu, um, and her contact details is in the newsletter. Um, online offering is still available, um, but if you wish to uh, offer by cash, we have the um, uh, offering box at the back that you can put your cash in there as well. And just a reminder, we have prayer meetings every Saturday via Zoom. And um, something that's not on the newsletter is that I encourage everyone to uh, visit our roster um, website and, um, or speak to Kathleen or Dan. Um, if you would like to serve uh, at English service, because I, I visited to the uh, roster website and I realized there's still some empty spots. And I really encourage everyone to put up their hands and come forward to serve the Lord. Here ends the service. Thank you. <laughs>